Hello my friends, let me share with you this Inuit style sea kayak paddle that I built. The patterns that are on the paddle blade itself, not only are they decorative, but they can also identify the individual that owns the kayak. The paddle length is up to the individual. Mine is just under eight foot in length. After building a prototype of this Inuit style paddle, and testing it, um, I found some features that the modern pad paddle does not have. Um, when I first showed my prototype to some kayakers that were friends of mine, first thing they said is it has the wrong shape. But researching the old Inuit photos of the paddles that the natives were using, and they've probably been using those style paddle for thousands of years. Um, they're paddling in cold water and there must have been a reason why they had that particular shape. And uh, this is the finished pad paddle, uh, not the prototype. But uh, one of the advantages of this shape, which I discovered later, is the modern paddles have uh, cups on the handles before your hand to block the water from running down the, the shaft of the paddle and wetting you, your body, wetting you, wetting your hands and arms. With this paddle what I discovered is this particular shape, the water on the paddle runs down and drips off of this point and that may be an intentional thing that is done through uh, years of use of paddles in frigid freezing waters. And keeping dry would be uh, very important uh, in that type of an environment. So uh, with this paddle I found that I do not need those water cups on the handles. So and when uh, this paddle is in the water, the entire blade is submersed and it has approximately the same uh, square inch of surface space as a modern type paddle. Um, so I don't see any disadvantage of using that, but the advantage would be uh, keeping drier from the use of this type of paddle. And it looks neater can't have a wood strip kayak that you take a half a year to a year to build and then have a plastic paddle to go with it. I'm tracing my pattern onto a one inch piece of birch wood and you will need a dark piece also in order to create the dark light uh, pattern of a picture. Here I'm drawing a cut line and squaring off my line of my pattern and this will be the line that I will follow with the bandsaw. Both ends I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle with my chop saw and this gives me a real smooth cut in comparison to what the bandsaw would do. I'll do this same procedure a second time with a piece of four-quarter uh, walnut piece of wood and that will give me my two contrasting colors, the dark and the light. I'm securing the two halves together with a piece of duct tape. Masking tape would work better for this, but I didn't have any at the time. You do not want to cut through duct tape. That will foul your saw blades, the adhesive from the duct tape. So I keep the tape off of the pattern that I'll be cutting. And um, I'll be cutting this with my bandsaw, and I placed my narrowest blade on the saw which just happened to be a quarter inch 
and that's not real fine for making sharp turns. Since you're cutting through such a thick piece of wood, approximately two inches, you can't hurry the cut. You have to allow it to uh, work its way through the wood. And here you can see I cannot make this sharp turn that I had drawn. So I cut the shoulder of that wing short. And of course you can't make a, a back cut, so you have to back the blade out. Starting on the second side, with the tail I'm doing the same thing making the turn now on this inside corner it's too tight and I can't short change that cut so what I'm doing is I'm using the blade to cut out relief clearance for the back edge of the blade until I have enough cut away that I can make the complete turn and finish that cut these larger gaps that I'm leaving in the kerf um, will be filled with uh, stained or colored uh, epoxy. After this second cut, instead of trying to back the blade up, it's easier just to remove the two sections. And here you can see the contrasting colors and a perfect fit. Draw your pattern. You can hold it up against a mirror and see what the finished image is going to look like. And right there, that highlights it. Then you can tell whether being symmetrical if it looks okay. So that's what I did. Now you're given the choice of how you want your paddles to look. So you can either have solid with a dark bird or a light bird or the contrasting ones and this is what I chose. The two halves then put together and that will be the finished paddle. As an adhesive for the paddles, you want to use an epoxy. This is impervious to the water. I prefer the System 3 epoxy. I purchase it from uh, a boat supplier. Uh, uh, it's called Merlin. He's out of New, New England, I believe Maine. Mix. Uh, I'm using uh, sanding dust as a filler and a stain and I'm using walnut sanding dust. So whenever I'm working wood and I'm sanding, I save the different types of wood and label uh, the containers of what type of wood is in them. So this particular case, I want the dark uh, color for the saw curves. And I'm applying the epoxy to both surfaces because they have to be uh, slid together like a puzzle and if you only applied it to the one side you may be scraping the epoxy off of one of the parts this way it assures that epoxy will be in the entire surface where it's being joined after uh, pushing it together I'm cleaning off the excess that was on there and um, what you do not want to do when you're it using epoxy as an adhesive you don't want clamping pressure you can't like with wood you want clamping pressure and it squeezes the glue out of the uh, gluing mating surfaces but with the epoxy you need to keep that volume in there and that creates the bond after Curing overnight and cleaning the surfaces, you want to resaw these two halves uh, down the center. And I would like to do this with my table saw. I put a laser cut blade on it so it makes a very thin kerf. 
and I have it set that we will cut halfway through from both sides. It's sometimes best to have this cut and still leave it attached and in the middle where it's real thin and finish that cut then on your bandsaw. I'm making my handle from a piece of one inch by one and a quarter inch uh, sassafras stock. And you can see here I'm making a saw curve on both ends. This is going to be where the paddle blade will be attached. But I'm not removing that piece as of yet. My first cut is a 15 degree chamfer. And you can see here uh, it comes part way up the side. And again, I'm, I still have that paddle area left attached. This gives support in later operations. My next cut is a 45 degree chamfer on the back side. This is going to be shaped into an oval handle which is very comfortable to hold. This is the holding vise that I'm using to shape the handle and round the sharp edges. It works real good uh, with the draw knife and you can use it in a pulling action and it's very easy to move and hold the stock that you're working on. Uh, to control the depth of your cut, I'm using an old spoke shave here and it's given me an erratic cut. So then I shifted to my hand plane. And the hand plane, in this case, you have to be pushing um, and that's what I'm doing here. And you can use uh, the area uh, between you and the vise and you can also use the area on the other side, just shift up on the, the seat there and uh, push. The ends of the handle, term, both ends, terminate with the taper. And this is the reason I left that uh, additional stock uh, on the ends. And this is giving support so that the points don't bend under the uh, use of the knife or the plane. Now that excess stock can be removed from the handles. And here you have a picture where I had cut the piece out. And if you look at the upper right hand corner, it's squared. What I want to do is chisel that out to make it be able to fit the point of the handle or the paddle. And here you can see the paddle being attached into that corner. After the epoxy adhesive cures overnight, then you size the thickness. I ran it through my planer to about a quarter inch in thickness. And here you have the finished pieces ready to be attached. Um, I'm using the same epoxy with this time I use sassafras sanding dust as the filler and it gives a lighter adhesive coloring and uh, I'm using clamps or spring clamps only to hold it in location. There's minimal pressure on this joint so I'm not squeezing out the epoxy. After sanding smooth finish the paddle with two coats of epoxy and then a coat of spar varnish. The first coat of epoxy thin with alcohol so that it penetrates well into the wood. Here's the finished paddle with its dimensions. Dimensions to note 20 inches long, 4 inch high, 2 inch high, and 45 degrees. Thanks for watching my friends. Bye bye.